When you're a kid and your parent comes to you and says, hey kid, where do you want to eat for your birthday? You go insane a little bit. You don't know what to say because you never get to decide anything. But I as a kid stepped up to the plate. Emphatically, I picked Olive Garden every single year. And we know why. They give you salad and breadsticks in unlimited quantities. We're talking about dressing soaked croutons, pepperoncinis, garlicky breadsticks in an unlimited quantity. But on this channel, just recreating it is not enough. We're gonna try and eliminate some of the things that don't exactly work out in the restaurant and improve the things that we really love about it. I'm really excited to bring you guys into my head and show you why I love this dish so much. Great salad and breadsticks are of course gonna start with the breadsticks. <laughs> So grab that trusty stainless steel bowl and into it we're gonna measure 320 grams of warm water, eight grams of salt, four grams of yeast, six grams of sugar, and 425 grams of all-purpose flour. And if you guys don't have a scale at this point, don't sweat it. I'm just gonna start listing one of the types of measurements in these videos. I'm gonna leave the volumetric down in the description below. Reference it there if you need it. With a sturdy spoon, start stirring our dough to combine. It's gonna form a shaggy ball pretty quickly. At that point, we're gonna switch over to our hands. Remember to wet them first just to avoid too much sticking. At first, we're gonna be kneading in the classic sense that we're all familiar with. We're gonna be using our palm, sort of work a little bit of strength by folding this dough over and over. That's about two minutes. And then we're gonna switch to our slap and fold technique as you can see here. This builds strength easily and quickly and in my mind is the preferred method for hand mixing in a bowl like this. It's not very messy and it's very quick and it gives us great results. Once we have a nice shine to the dough and it's fully come together, I'd say about four to six minutes later, we're gonna wrap this with plastic wrap and set it aside for two hours to rise on the counter. To make this dressing, grab a tall plastic two cup container and an immersion blender. Into the container, we're gonna measure 45 grams of white distilled vinegar, 25 grams of champagne or white wine vinegar, 15 grams sugar, five grams salt, one gram each of black pepper, dried oregano, dried basil, and red chili flake, 20 grams of red onion, 10 grams of bell pepper, one clove of garlic, and 25 grams of grainy mustard. We're also gonna need about 200 grams of a neutral oil like safflower, canola, avocado reserve when we go to spin this vinaigrette in just a second. This is gonna be an emulsified dressing, by the way. Why would you wanna emulsify a salad dressing? I wanna keep the oil and the vinegar stuck together as it eats on this salad because this vinegar is really strong. It doesn't taste amazing on its own. Not like a balsamic where if it was just sitting in the bottom of the bowl, it'd be delicious all by itself. So we wanna make sure that that super tart vinegar is being constantly cut by this fat here in our dressing. I kind of move the top of my blender head to the top of this because it's really spinning down here and I'm adding the oil on top. You don't want the oil to sit there for too long. So kind of lift that blender head up a little bit. Spin it up, nice and emulsified. Now our vinaigrette's gonna sit on this lettuce in a really pleasant way. Grab my spoon and just give it a little taste of rooney. Tastes like the garden, olive garden. If you've pureed it too much, it could be a little bit warm and that's not a great thing for holding oil in an emulsion. So we're gonna throw it in the fridge, come back when we're ready to dress our salad. And that's that, what a thrill. Any great Italian salad really isn't complete without perfectly saturated croutons. For that, we need some sourdough and I usually keep some in the house. I've been baking a lot lately and that's what I'm using here. It's been drying in my pantry for about two or three days at this point and it's nice and stale. We're gonna cut this into slices and then we're gonna remove the thick outer crust and cut into nice chunky cubes. To bring these to the brink of Italian restaurant glory like we want to, we're gonna season them with half teaspoon garlic powder, a half teaspoon of dried oregano, a half teaspoon salt, a couple glugs of olive oil and four tablespoons spoons of melted butter. I'd say there's about three to four cups of diced bread here. Anything rustic you have on hand will work, like I said. Just avoid sweetened white or whole wheat breads. They're just not gonna hold up once we dress the salad. We want croutons that welcome the dressing. We need thirsty croutons. I'm gonna be throwing these croutons into a 350 degree oven to get them crispy and dry, a little bit browned, and that's gonna take about 20 minutes. If you've been following our journey on this channel, then you're a well-seasoned home baker at this point. You know by looking at this dough, it's bubbly, alive, and it's ready to be portioned. So to do that, we're gonna flip it out onto a floured work surface. This is a 12 breadstick recipe or 60 gram pieces each. Once they're portioned, I'm gonna gently pre-shape these into rounds using our tried and true hamburger bun rolling technique as featured in the chicken salad video. Don't worry about tension or strength at this point. We're just looking for a uniform shape more than anything. Once they're balled up, we're gonna set them aside for about 10 to 15 minutes to rest up. And we're gonna make a little sprinkle to put on the outside of these breadsticks. On a quarter sheet tray, we're gonna lay down about a quarter cup of Parmesan, two teaspoons 
teaspoons oregano, a half teaspoon salt, one teaspoon black pepper, a teaspoon chili flake, and a good amount of sesame seeds, like two teaspoons. We're also gonna need to dampen a paper towel for when we get to the shaping part of these breadsticks. 15 minutes later, when it's time to shape, we're gonna grab a dough ball and we're gonna flip it onto its top. We're gonna flatten the ball slightly and begin to roll it towards us. We're gonna roll it into a fat cigar shape and then a little bit wider using the palms of our hands and our fingertips. Creating a little bit of a triangle with your hand and gently rolling it back and forth, you put a little pressure on the outside of the stick and that's how we get the shape we need. We're gonna gently roll this stick onto a paper towel just to wet it and then we're gonna roll it in the sprinkle to make sure we get some Parmesan and all those dried herbs stuck to the outside and then seam side down, we're gonna lay it onto a parchment lined baking sheet to proof. We wanna make sure we're well coated on these before we proof them. This is kind of the secret to making these breadsticks our own. If we wanna bring this stuff into the future, then we need to do something special and this coating is our move. Once we have all these shaped, we're gonna cover with another sheet tray and set aside to proof for about 30 to 40 minutes. Again, we've got 12 pieces here. I'm doing eight on one sheet tray and four on a little quarter sheet. By the way, at this point, our croutons are done. They're golden, they're crispy, buttery, salty, and I ate a bunch while prepping all this food. You know what I'm saying, you're a little bad dog and you need a snack. You need a little daddy snack. This is a good time to make some butter that's infused with garlic to go on our breadsticks. And all I'm doing here is just taking four to five tablespoons or a half stick of butter, melting it, and then throwing in some crushed garlic cloves. We're gonna let that simmer for about 20 to 30 seconds, fry up the garlic a little bit, and then we're gonna take it off the heat so that garlic can kind of infuse while our breadsticks are proofing. It's been about 30 minutes and our breadsticks are nicely proofed. They're about double, and when we poke them with our finger, it leaves just a slight indentation. At this point, we're gonna brush all of our sticks liberally with garlic butter. I'm saying like two to three coats. And then we're gonna throw it into a 375 degree oven for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, they should be golden, crispy, and smelling garlicky and amazing. And at that point, we're gonna brush again right away with two or three more coats of this garlic butter. This should use all of the butter we melted earlier and definitely don't skimp on this. This is like the detail that we need to hit with these breadsticks. So let's keep moving. We're gonna snack on one of these breadsticks now and then we're gonna finish up our salad prep. For that, just some quick knife work and assembling the ingredients. I have a newfound appreciation for green leaf lettuce, by the way. I used to put it in the same category as iceberg where I thought it was too watery and didn't have a lot of flavor, but it's got a ton of that yellow crunchy core that we all love. And by the way, there's people out there who don't eat the core of lettuce like this. And that's just not right, you guys. The thing about lettuce like this is that the core is like the juice. It's the stuff that you want. I don't even wanna have a salad like this without cores. I want mostly cores. I don't know, give it a try. Green leaf's been good to me. I recommend checking it out, giving it a revisit. And this is controversial, but I'll say green leaf is better than romaine. You need about one head per person. It's just Lauren and I for lunch, so I have two heads of green leaf here, and I'm just chopping and washing these real quick. Next, we're gonna chop off a chunk of a red onion, and we're gonna really thinly slice it. And then we're gonna give it a quick rinse like we have been doing with our onions to take off that harsh, sulfury edge, because we are gonna be eating these raw. All day, we need about one cup of sliced red onion. I'm gonna grab some salami, and we're gonna cut about three ounces total into thin strips. Plan on about one and a half ounces per person per salad. If you wanted to make this into a weeknight dinner sesh, some grilled chicken would work perfectly here. To actually build the salad, we're gonna need about half of our Italian dressing and half of the croutons we made. Like I said, it's just me and Lauren for lunch, so we don't need everything here. We're gonna need our red onions, pepper and chinis to taste, quarter cup Parmesan, and about one small cocktail tomato per person. These are called Campari tomatoes, and I've been seeing them pop up in grocery stores, and they're actually a really good option for out of season tomatoes. They're sweet like a cherry tomato, but have a little bit more size and fleshiness to them. We also need some ice cold black olives here and our salami. It's time to dress our salad here. And if we're talking about pro level moves, we gotta dress our croutons first. These croutons need to get super saturated with dressing. So we're giving them a dose up front to make sure they get what they need. We're gonna follow that with green leaf and then all the rest of our garnishes. Be generous with Parmesan. The salad really benefits from having tons of parm in there. Grab a huge bowl and some tongs and just dress it. You don't have to worry about working it too hard. A salad like this actually benefits from being slightly beat up. Tonight, you're the Olive Garden server. You get the pleasure of that table side toss. At this point, you need to be pouring yourself like a cheap glass of ice cold white wine or somehow Diet Coke seems appropriate here too. And then it's time to get unlimited, baby. Let's eat this salad. I'm gonna get a big bite of salad and a big bite of breadstick. The dressing is like really acidic in a good way. Like it needs to be because you got so much cheese and fat in this salad, it kind of balances it out. 
you get a little bit of that nice salami in there. These breadsticks are alarmingly close to what it's like in the restaurant. I did a couple mods to the stick, a couple DIY mods. So it's kind of a custom joint. The thing that makes it taste like Italian restaurant vinaigrette is like the dried herbs and the bell pepper in there. That is like pulling on your heartstrings. That's the nostalgia zone. And like a big dumb tomato covered in Parmesan. Ooh, wow. So that's it. That's an 11 year old B-man's wildest birthday dream come true. And it's scratching that 90s chain restaurant itch that we didn't even know we had. And you know what? Eat all four portions of this salad between two people. Crack some Diet Cokes and put on a movie that your mom would approve of. Something with like Hugh Grant or uh, Julia Roberts. It sounds amazing, right? Maybe you eat this and make it with your mom. She loves that stuff. I guarantee it. As always, guys, thank you so much for being here. And if you got some value out of this content, please hit subscribe and tell a friend. That really helps. We can grow the community of people who are sharing in this content. Thank you so much for your time and attention. We'll see you next time. I'm a simple man.